Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Dr. Ola Brown, and welcome to the launch of our Project Finance in Healthcare Reports. I'm going to be giving a series of lectures today talking about project finance with a focus on healthcare. Um, this report is super important to me because I um, invest across the value chain um, in technology, in private equity investments in healthcare, and also in infrastructure. And I feel like project finance is underutilized in infrastructure. Um, so at the Flying Doctors Healthcare Investment Company, we put this report together in-house, our first in-house um, produced report, um, to talk about how project finance um, can be used in healthcare to not only transform um, and save lives, but also um, benefit from the economic impact of investing in healthcare as well. Um, a bit about me before we start. I'm a doctor, surprise, surprise. Um, and I um, finished my medical degree at the whole York Medical School. Um, I then went on um, to be awarded the MEX Japanese Government Scholarship, where I did a research fellowship in the GK Hospital and Medical School in Tokyo. Um, I then started an air ambulance business, um, which grew into one of the leading air ambulance and emergency services companies um, in West Africa, working all across Africa for emergency medicine and delivering um, assistance services um, and other healthcare services. Um, I then went on to um, co-found um, the Green Tree Investment Company, um, along with four other directors. Um, we invested uh, sector agnostic in venture capital, um, but um, with a focus on financial technology. So we invested in companies like Paystack and like Ruby Finance, as well as media tech companies um, like Big Cabal Media. I then went on to further my studies um, with a master's in finance and economic policy at the University of London. And I've studied infrastructure, public-private partnerships um, and um, project finance at Harvard University, at the New York Institute of Finance, and at Bocconi University in Italy. Um, the Flying Doctors Investment Company is a sector-focused investment firm where we invest across the value chain in healthcare, um, both in healthcare technology, um, healthcare private equity, and of course, the subjects of this report, project finance. So what are we going to be talking about? Um, in this lecture, I'll be talking about the history of project finance and the difference between project finance and corporate finance. I'll be giving you some international and local case studies in the next lecture. Um, and then we have a lecture that focuses on just public-private partnerships. Um, after that, I'll talk about some of the legal terms, agreements and risk in project finance. Um, and I'll be concluding with a short talk on financial modelling um, in project finance. Um, so hopefully, I'm going to talk for a very short time so I don't bore all of you. Um, but in that time, give you a good foundation um, for project finance and how it can be useful for healthcare as well as the wider economy. So I'll start with my favourite definition of project finance. And this is from the godfather, I think, of um, project finance. I really enjoy both of his textbooks. Um, and his name is Jess Cohn. Um, and um, he published his textbook on uh, public-private partnerships in 2007. Um, and he defines project finance as a method of raising long-term financing for major projects. And it's based on lending against cash flow generated by the project. And it depends on a detailed evaluation of a project's construction, operating and revenue risks, and their allocation between the investors, the lenders, and other parties through different contractual agreements. Um, I love how um, Fabozzi um, describes it as well. He says that lenders look to the cash flow from the project being financed rather than to the corporation or corporation seeking funding. So capital intensive facilities such as power plants um, in Nigeria, you think of Azura power plant, for instance, refineries, toll roads, uh, pipelines and mines. Um, this is the kind of thing that project finance is used um, usually um, to, to create. Um, the power sector is very dominant, but it can also be used for smaller projects as well. And at the Flying Doctors Healthcare Investment Company, we've used project finance structures for things like um, laboratories, for instance, um, in um, public-private partnerships. Next, I'd like to talk about the history of project finance. Um, and there was a really interesting PPP in the Bible. Um, so Matthew was one of the 12 disciples in the Bible. 
And um, in the Roman Empire, in order to become a tax collector, because Matthew the tax collector in the New Testament is actually quite a famous figure, you would have to bid and pay for the right to collect tax. And that money for the bid was then used to build the Roman Empire. So Matthew, the tax collector, was actually in a public-private partnership in the Bible where he would actually go, raise capital, and bid for the right to collect taxes from the Roman Empire. Then he would then be given the right to become a tax collector for a particular region. So very interestingly, um, people look at project finances as a new development, but actually it has quite ancient origins. Um, similarly, in um, the Roman concession, um, concession system, Project finance was very, very prominent. In, in my personal opinion, um, I'm not sure that there's any evidence for this. I think that people concentrate, and the movies definitely concentrate, on the Roman Empire's military expertise. So if you watch films like Sparta and Gladiator, um, you see that the Roman Empire was famous for military expertise. But I'm not sure if the movies concentrate as much on their, as their financial expertise as well. And I think that one of the things that builds economies is actually the way that governments and empires use capital um, to be able to, and use private capital to be able to further their objectives. And the Roman Empire was very good at this, very good at public-private partnerships, getting money from the private sector um, to build these roads around their empire and to fund their military and to fund everything else they would want to do. So Rome was actually a financial centre as well as a military centre. Um, and they're good examples in um, ancient Greece as well, um, where project finance was used to finance maritime operations and infrastructure, so the port infrastructure as well. Um, and in those cases, shipping merchants used project finance techniques to be able to dilute the risks um, on maritime loans. So you could advance somebody a loan and the repayment would be guaranteed, not by the company, but actually by the internally generated cash flows of that particular um, voyage or mission. And project finance has actually been used for centuries. Um, the first documented in the journals um, project finance transaction dates back to 1299, when the English crown used a loan from um, an Italian merchant bank to finance exploration and the development of the Devon silver mines. So project finance actually has a very, very rich history dating centuries back. Um, and it's not a new phenomenon like a lot of people think. Um, and I just put a picture of an ancient god, a uh, Roman god, I think or a Greek god, uh, Zeus here, uh, just because I can. But moving on. Um, so the modern history actually um, of project finance sort of in the Anglo-American world um, is in the mid 20th century in the United States where it was used to finance mining and real companies and sort of evolved into uh, financing the natural gas power plants etc um, that project finance actually becomes has become quite famous for in like all of the classic um, kind of case studies. Um, so the common features of project finance it's usually provided for a ring fenced project so one that is economically and legally self-contained using an SPV. And it's usually raised for a new project rather than established business. Um, in project finance, there's a higher ratio of debt to equity. That's called leverage or gearing. Um, there are no guarantees from the investors in the project finance. So it's a non-recourse source of um, um, type of financing. And lenders rely on the future cash flow or for payment of their interest and loan repayments rather than the value of the assets or analysis of historical results of the company because there usually are no historical results. A project has a finite life and project debt must be repaid within this life. And it also relies on the microeconomics of that project. So a lot of attention is paid to the microeconomics of that specific project um, rather than in corporate finance where you know, it would be the entire company. A lot of people view corporate finance and project finance a bit like this. So corporate finance looks exciting and like, you know, um, modern and, you know, uh, attractive. And uh, project finance is more like the guy that uses sellotape to like put his glasses together. Um, and this isn't really the difference between project and corporate finance, even though uh, the perception <laughs> seems to be like that. 
actually the differences between corporate and project finance are around the guarantees. So the guarantees for a corporate finance transaction would be the assets of the borrower, whereas um, for projects, it would be the project assets and the project cash flow. In terms of the effects on financial uh, elasticity, you'll see that in, project, um, in corporate finance, um, there's a reduction in the financial elasticity of the borrower, whereas in project finance, there's none or a heavily reduced effect um, for the sponsors. In terms of the accounting treatment, in corporate finance, it's on balance sheets. And in project finance, it's usually off balance sheets. Um, and in terms of the degree of um, leverage that you can use, in corporate finance, one of our local banks, say Zenith Bank or um, GT, will be looking directly at the borrower's balance sheet. But in project finance, they'll be looking at the predicted generated cash flows that are going to come from the project. And the main vari um, variables underlying the granting of financing, how likely it is for you to get financing, is how solid your balance sheet is in corporate finance, how profitable your company is. Whereas in project finance, it's what the future cash flows of that particular project are going to bring. So um, just sort of to talk about infrastructure briefly, um, project finance is used for both economic infrastructure like electricity, power transactions, mines, roads, um, and also social infrastructure like schools and hospitals. And I think it has huge development potential, which our report actually explores in more detail. Africa's annual infrastructure needs are estimated at $93 billion, 15% of our GDP. And um, Africa actually hasn't done that many project finance transactions compared to the rest of the world. Sub-Saharan Africa actually um, accounted for just 3% of project finance um, transactions done across the world. So in conclusion, I hope I've only taken 15 minutes because I promised that'd be short. Um, this presentation is really in defense of project finance um, as an asset class. And I've, I've put a picture of a, a courtroom here because I hope I've defended uh, project finance well in this presentation. Um, we looked at the definitions and features of project finance in this presentation, and we looked at the differences between project finance and corporate finance. And we looked at the type of impact it can make in terms of infrastructure. Um, I know there's a lot of Africans um, watching this presentation. Um, and, you know, project finance transactions build infrastructure on a large scale. Um, and maybe through a project, trans, uh, project finance transaction, our courts can start looking like, our courts in Nigeria can start looking like this one. Uh, thank you very much.